I am not comparing David Hogg to Hitler Youth at all. No comparison other than the hand and the armband thing. <laughs> That's the only thing, It's but it's incidental. And the gun control. That's the, oh, well, yeah. the likely socialism. And the overall demure stature with distinct lack of jawline and general malfeasance. But no more comparison to the Hitler Ninth. <laughs> Here's my question for everyone out there today. Do you think the kids like David Hogg should be off limits? When is it okay to criticize them? And to what degree? What do you, what do you think? Genuinely, I would like to know. Okay. Let me start this by saying, I cannot even begin to imagine, so I wouldn't even pretend to, the trauma of a, a massacre like what occurred at the school, and very empathetic to anyone involved, okay? I think everybody is, so let's just, let's get that off of the table, because, okay, my grandfather died when I was uh, in uh, the sixth grade, closest relative of mine, that was really, really hard, period. Later, I was a dick when I poured grape juice into my friend's lunchbox. Two separate issues, okay? Entirely separate. Victim, and then I was the bully. I think David Hogg is a bully. This is just my opinion. Here's why everyone has a right to an opinion, okay? Everyone has the right to voice an opinion. Of course you do, Mr. Hogg. But when you enter the public arena to voice it or specifically propose legislation, everyone has the right to criticize that opinion. That's, that's my opinion on the issue. So when is it okay, if ever, to get personal? Well, typically the rule is if the other person draws first blood. If they get personal, and then we murky it all up with the whole age factor. And that's what really bothers me about the situation. This is what bothers me when you see just this, the, the degrading of our national dialogue to the identity to this degree. David Hogg, I think he's wrong. Mm -hmm. I think he's unprofessional. I think on a personal level, he's on his way to being, if he isn't already, a bad human being. Here's why. They're pathetic fuckers that want to keep killing our children. They could have blood from children spattered all over their faces and they wouldn't take action because they all still see those dollar signs. He does not give a f about these kids' lives at all. He only cares about his reelection. Okay, yeah. What? Now that would seem kind of, kind of, you know, yeah. jerkish. Uh, but the thing is, when you say, hey, you know what? You really probably shouldn't talk about people that way. He goes into the, oh, hold on, the age thing. When people try to suppress your vote, and there are people who stand against you because you are too young. We say no more. Well, at this point, it's like when you're when you're old ass parents, like I don't know how to send an I message, and you're just like, give me the phone, and you take it, and you're like, okay, let me handle it, and you get it done in one second. Sadly, that's what we have to do with our government because our parents don't know how to use a democracy, so we have to. <laughs> now, that would be mildly off-putting in and of itself um, if you didn't add on top of it the rampant hypocrisy. But what she does most of the time is she's like, oh, these leftist, this leftist group is trying to take all your, she gets this really threatening tone about us that we don't have. We love every, <laughs> like, we're people that just want to come, want everybody to come together as Americans and help us solve this issue. A mean tone? That's the pissant pot calling the kettle bitch. It's <laughs> ridiculous. By the way, to those of you who going, let's go after his sponsors. Go for it. Give it your best shot. <laughs> what are you going to do? Demonetize us extra? <laughs> extra. He's just a 17-year-old Christopher Titus. I'm unhinged because you know why 32,000 Americans are ah. dead and that, you, and that you're not that you're not unhinged about that is kind of upsetting. Of course, of course you're upset, Mr. Titus. Now picture if I were to come back with a logical argument and you go, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm 17. I'm 17. It's always, this is what really bothers me. Is, 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 there, is the left is using, obviously, this horrible tragedy to create a cybernetic victim superhuman who you cannot touch. Doesn't matter what he says, doesn't matter how much he insults people, doesn't matter how much he goes out and he takes pot shots, doesn't matter how personal he gets, if anyone responds, even critically, they wanna say, how could you do that? Would somebody please think of the children? He's six months from being able to vote. Yeah. Okay, and here's the, here's the deal. E even at 17, 18, there, we don't let emotional people determine our laws, okay? Which is what they're trying to do right now. We don't say, well, oh, you can't do, you can't do this unless you've been in a mass shooting. We don't allow exclusively rape victims to determine rape laws. No, 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 not at all. Matter of fact, police- Suffering usually, and trauma doesn't make you more of a qualified as an expert in anything. Not at all. Usually police circle back and ask you to calm down because your memory's fuzzy. Things get clear the further you get away from the trauma. And here's like teenagers, it's, they have a lack of critical, rational thinking ability. They do not have a fully developed brain. This kid, for example, he's not, there's no self-awareness. He's not aware of the fact that teenage drivers age six to, uh, 16 to 19, I think, are three times, three or four times more likely than drivers aged 20 to be in a fatal crash. Okay, and th that's, that's why they can't get car insurance on a rental car without paying an exorbitant <laughs> fee until you're 25. He's not self-aware to understand the record number of teenagers consuming Tide Pods. 
Yeah. Oh, he also lacks the self-awareness to know that doing this whole salute while wearing the armband kind of rubs people the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I, I want to make this really clear. I'm not saying, okay, uh, hashtag all kids. Or even that, you know, hashtag kids opinions don't matter. That's, that's, not, so, that's not at all what I'm saying. I'm not saying because he's young that his, his opinion is invalid. By the way, some kids do unbelievable things. And he's not even Asian. How is he so talented? <laughs> Damn you. Damn you and your cornucopia of skills, Mr. Shapiro. Mm. <laughs> the problem I have here and I don't know what, how you guys, is, is, is the unfair weaponization yeah. of teenagers entering the public arena, espousing opinions, demanding policy changes, and then claiming underage immunity from any and all criticism. Yeah. Are you the child or are you the expert? P yeah, pick exactly. one. I hate the handlers propping him up doing that, saying, okay, maybe people aren't going to touch this guy. We'll just put him out there and let him get killed. It seems to me that you are the expert, David Hogg. <laughs> <laughs> the exploitation of youth, by the way, for political gain is not a new thing. Yes. Let me, okay, context, Hitler youth was a thing. Now, just to be clear, it's an example of politicization of children. I am not comparing David Hogg to Hitler youth at all. No comparison other than the hand and the armband thing. <laughs> That's the only thing, It's but it's incidental. And the gun control. That's the, oh, well, yeah. the likely socialism. And the overall demure stature with distinct lack of jawline and general malfeasance. But no more comparison to Hitler. Nine. Nine more comparisons. <laughs> Sponsors, go for them. Go for them. <laughs> It's people like him, they, they give him the spotlight because they like what he says. But when you look at this, he, he acts like he wants to really push for legislation. Well, what's he, what's he doing to do so? No. He's getting on CNN and Oprah and, and Ellen and talking all about ideas, but he, he brags about hanging up on the White House. Right, exactly. Like President Trump. He, he goes on and on and on about his hatred for Marco Rubio, and it's like, <laughs> let's... Let's Marco Rubio doesn't way. care. Why doesn't he care about dead children? The point here is that none of the overwhelming dislike ratio that you see online, including on channels like CNN, is because, David Hogg, let me speak directly to you because I know you're watching. You're going to try and go up to the sponsors. Please, go nuts. It's not because you're 17. It's not because you're a liberal. None of it is due to a lack of empathy for what you've gone through. Okay, we all want solutions. We just have different ideas. Can we? This is one thing hopefully you'll learn, David Hogg, that everyone actually cares. Most people actually care. They just happen to have different ideas. And you need to allow Room for that to be the case. You can't talk about bringing people together and then say no one can come together if it just if we don't all agree entirely. And then I'm going to hang up on the president. <laughs> Here's the pro it's because you demand a platform to speak, refuse to engage or debate with anyone from any other point of view, claim to be a child when it's convenient, then switch hats and claim that people better take your ideas seriously while chastising, swearing at people, name calling, simultaneously demanding that everyone else be civil. It has nothing to do with your age and everything to do with the fact that you're a manipulative, divisive, verbally abusive bully who wants a different set of standards apply to you and your friends for the kind of behavior which would have had you kindly removed from the restaurant in any other scenario. Here's the deal. I want you to do well, David Hogg. I want you to grow up and be successful. I hope that you change the world. Great. Go nuts. But for that to happen, someone's got to discipline you a little bit. The real world has red pens. The real world has wooden spoons. The real world has consequences. When you enter an arena and you choose a weapon, as you have done with the social political arena and the policies that you're proposing, which, by the way, strip other people of their fundamental human rights, you better be ready for what the real world has to offer. Maybe you can Twitter bully a few cable news hosts. Maybe you can Twitter bully a few classmates. Hell, maybe you can bully YouTube into getting this video removed or at least demonetized as hate speech for all I care. But you'll soon find out that in the real world, Mr. Hogg, you can't Twitter bully all your potential bosses. You can't bully all your potential wives or husbands. You can't bully all of your classmates and your work colleagues into agreeing with you. David Hogg, I'm trying to help you. Let me be clear. I'm trying to help you because pretty soon, and I mean within a matter of weeks, a matter of months at most, all of these media stars, all the starlets who've been using you, and they've been using, they've been exploiting you, they're not going to be there. They're not going to be calling. Hell, they probably won't even be answering your own calls if some kid happens to bring an alarm clock and a suitcase to school or fly in a bubble. You'll be last week's news, and you'll be finding yourself looking around, wondering where all of your cool new friends are. They won't be there. Finding your voice is great, but don't allow yourself to be exploited. Don't allow yourself to be used by people who don't care about you because they're not going to be here really soon. And then you're going to be left with the real world, and you're going to find out that the real world doesn't always agree with you, and you can't just cuss them out and tell them that they don't know how to use their iPhones properly. So I want you to learn this lesson now, because when that happens, who are you going to thank? Who are you going to It's not going to be Anderson Cooper. It's not going to be dead Johnny Mathis, but your old Uncle Steven. Hey, did you enjoy this video? Here's the thing, you're, over, you're here, this is the end of the, so we don't care because you already watched it, but if you really didn't like it and you want to justify it, leave a comment below telling us why you didn't like the video. And if you liked us, let us know and uh, subscribe to the channel because that lets the overlords at YouTube know that uh, 
you know what? You're all right. 